So today we're just gonna explore a day in the life of a wholesaler that ships these fish that you see when you walk into a pet store. Southland Aquatics, which I've owned for 11 years, has been in the market for 42 years. Been a lot of work since then. I will just show you the relevant stuff. You're gonna, I, right now I'm walking to the warehouse, I gotta have to do payroll, banking. You don't have to watch that stuff. So we're gonna be cutting through a lot of, a lot of the day a lot of the boring part of the day. But anyways, come on in to Southland Aquatics. So everyone's packing fish, so I gotta do little stuff. So right now I'm putting in a battery in our little camera system in the office. I don't really watch on the camera. I, I think that's kind of little George Orwellian. It's good at night to make sure all the power's going on and all the fish are safe so because it really does need 24-hour monitoring here. Because when you think about it, we have nearly a thousand tanks of fish and if that power goes out, uh, it's not the temperature so much it's critical, it's the air. We have a couple blowers that have to run that air through the fish systems to keep them alive. And uh, so that's mainly what I watch when I Turn on the camera, low ring system. The other part about that is redundancy. Because when you have a warehouse like this with all these fish, things happen, power goes out. You wanna make sure you have a generator. Blowers break. Blowers are industrial blowers that can last 10 years, but 10 years goes by and they blow up. That happened the very first year I bought this business. Emilio came in here and the whole place was filled with smoke and uh, it was because of our blower. This old pipe, but look how grody it looks. This is the blower pipe. Yeah, remember this, this place has been here for over 40 years. So, and, and the cobwebs have only been here three weeks. We clear out cobwebs every month. It's crazy here, but it's, this is a tropical jungle inside the warehouse and you know, we've got a lot of fish. All right, so we have a, I, I gotta go out and so you're gonna be meeting the crew right now. We have a goal of 125 boxes a day. If they beat that goal, everyone gets 20 bucks and they do it quite a bit. So, you know, every week they get a couple days, 20 bucks, so it's, it's fun cash. Um, and so we're gonna just give everyone their 20 bucks. So let's meet the crew. Oh, glowfish. And these pain in the foots are the glow tetras. Uh, I've created an assorted tank. We just got a shipment from 5D. Spectrum has designated them as the only people that can breed glowfish in the world. Um, but it's a big problem for them right now. The glowfish are being bred all over the world out of patent from the Spectrum patent that they own. Spectrum's the only one supposed to be breeding this, but we got a lot of copycatters around because you know, breeding a fish is no secret. These guys are all legit 5D fish. If you want to adhere to the law, make sure that the fish come from 5D and not from some bootlegger. Oh, and, and you walk as we walk around, you're gonna see tanks with a uh, strip like this. That means the tank has been clean, it's ready to receive fish. If you see an X, that means the fish, is, the fish are sick for some reason in there and being treated. So our people know better than to pull from that tank. And they're also trained to see if a fish starts wiggling, acting funny in the tank. You know there's something going on with the water or with the fish. So we put an X on that until we can figure out what's happening. A line this way, it means the fish were just received and uh, I need to check them. And when I pull that little piece of tape off, the people are ready to pick it up. Anyways, that's a taping system we use. Yeah, this is an X. We got some long fin glow danios, glow tetras. God, it sounds like we're, this is where all my glow fish are, by the way. We don't, we have very few glow fish in here. We just have to be walking by the two tanks that have glow fish. And I brought in some long fin glow fish. They just had a, it was a rough shipment. So I, I don't know what's going on uh, in regards to shipping here. Um, maybe they were held somewhere too long and in on the tarmac and got cold, but uh, we're nursing them through. We can't release them this week. We'll be shipping them next week. The long fin fish of any sort are more bred than the shorter fin version, so they are more susceptible to things like ick. Here's Miguel Vieta, Mike, we call him. Hi, Mike. Hello. You're on television. Awesome. <laughs> 
So Mike's been with us for three, four years? Um, yes. Four years, and uh, he drives one hour, one hour to get here? Hour and a half. One hour and a half to get here. Welcome to LA. Yes. <laughs> uh, we, beat the, we beat the thing awesome. yesterday. 126. So Griselda, and some people call her Grease, I don't know. <laughs> But Griselda, uh, we did the, she manages the, the packing count and the whole flow of the whole process. So she's the one responsible for beating the goal by one yesterday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Emilio, he's our senior packing and no one knows packing fish better than Emilio. We, w we got 126 yesterday, so thank you. So Emilio started when he was 18, that was, he's now 66. He's been packing since he was 18, and he knows every little thing about every freshwater, always freshwater fish, every freshwater fish. It, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing, and um, you know, he likes it, so he doesn't have to do this anymore, but, but he comes in here three days a week. Nieli speaks better Spanish than I do, and she's been with us for one year, about one year, yeah. And we did uh, 126, ciento vienti seis. Thank you. Thank you. And Nieli uh, was with another wholesaler called Coast that went bankrupt, like just overnight. It was very sad. Uh, so all his employees had to find a new position. Uh, she um, was, we were fortunate enough to grab her. She has years of packing experience. So even though she's been with us for one year, uh, she has almost 20 years experience. So Gomo came from the saltwater side, a different company, uh, Exotic Reef, another very good company. Uh, but he just wanted to change a pace. So we were fortunate enough to pick him up, kind of poach him actually, from uh, one of the other wholesalers. LAX has probably a half dozen really good sized saltwater distributors around the area. Most of the saltwater that goes through the whole country comes through the LAX airport, and that's one reason Southland Aquatics is here, too. Uh, of course, we only do freshwater. But yeah, so Gomo also has years and years of experience in packing fish. He's also our bat box guy, and so he does all these, constructs all these boxes, um, and he does little things around the warehouse, like he put these little magnets here because we use blades. And it freaked me out 11 years ago when I first bought this place. Now I'm like, blade cares. And we were talking about poly clips. Uh, as you watch, Gomo um, will see how fast that is. Um, he uses a poly clip machine on all the bags on this line where we use smaller bags, smaller counts. Bigger counts over here, it's a combo. If it's a real big bag, uh, you see Nayeli uses the old rubber band method. And these are special rubber bands, by the way. They're 100% rubber. And it's because you need them very pliable. You don't use the, the stuff you just buy in a store. And, um, and then, of course, the plastic, these plastic bags are also fish safe because uh, plastics can have quite a few bad chemicals in them. So here's a little thing about um, how hard it is to find people, why we're trying to get, always grab someone from inside the trade. A lot of stuff's hard to train people. For instance, like here's a, here's a gold nugget pleco. You watch, you watch Gomo packing, you're saying, ah, oh, he just does this and that. No, the, the gold nugget pleco has to have a lot of water, but even more oxygen. Gomo knows that. So if the packer, the guy who's grabbing the fish, puts in too much water in there, Gomo knows to pour that water out and have just enough for the bag so it gets transported safely. That's something, that's, that's some of that species specific. You have to learn on the job. There's no way that you can figure that out in just a day. So it takes weeks for someone, any, any one of these positions to really get trained in it and, and be competent. There's two main dyes that are used in the fish industry. Uh, one is malachite green and one is methylene blue. Malachite green is used as a primary ick controller. So you use malachite green to kill the parasite ick, uh, the little white spots. Methylene blue is used to coat the gills so that the gills are protected from 
ammonia during transportation. So we use just a little drop or two of methylene blue in some bags of fish. Some fish are sensitive to pretty much anything. Snails, scaleless fish, very small nano fish. We don't use anything, including methylene blue. Sometimes customers will get these bags with blue in them and clear and it'll freak them out. Methylene blue is harmless. It's used just to calm the fish's gills so that they can arrive without any ammonia burn. So that's the purpose of methylene blue. Malachite green is a whole different story. The whole dye thing's interesting because dyes were created in Germany. I, I know the producer hates it when I do history, but the German chemical business began like Bayer and all those big massive corporations from the dye industry. Clothes were fashionable, but how do you make reds and purples and rouges? And the Germans perfected it. But in that whole process, they found that some dyes actually had some other effects. They killed bacteria, they killed germs. They, they created a pharmaceutical business as a byproduct of the chemical business. And the chemical business was created as a byproduct of the dyeing business. But through that whole process, we found methylene blue, which was first a fabric dye, became a way to coat gills for fish. And methylene green, which is a fabric dye for green, became a pharmaceutical for ick medicine and other parasites. Uh, so anyways, that's a little quick history. Thing about fish is cichlids is the easiest for sizes. Each size, because it takes so much to grow them out, like a one inch fish isn't half as much as a two inch fish, it's a quarter as much. So you double the price each time you go up. So uh, if a cichlid at one inch is a dollar, a cichlid at three inches is more like three or four dollars, not just two dollars, because, because of the time it takes to grow a fish. This heater keeps the warehouse completely warm. The top tanks stay about 80 degrees, middle tanks stay about 76, 77 degrees, bottom tanks low 70s. So for that reason, the bottom tanks, we keep the snails, the catfish, the loaches, bottom dwelling fish go to the bottom tanks. Mid-level dwelling fish such as cichlids go in the middle tanks and top dwelling fish such as tetras, small schoolers, angelfish, hatchet fish, all go in the top tanks. And then we keep track of what's in the tank. This is mainly for the packers and also for stores. Local, we're only, we're not open to the public, but local stores will come in here, particularly on Mondays, a really busy day because they're buying for the week. And they'll go through and find the fish here and write out their list. And then our guys will catch them and pack them for them. And then they'll take off to their store. So you can imagine Monday mornings are crazy here. But for the rest of the week, we're shipping around the US. It's not like local store day. Most of our shipments go out of California. You know, we get orders uh, via the computer, and that's the nicest ones, because we just press a button, these things spit out. Other times, people will call them in the old-fashioned way, and we have to write them out. And uh, right now, we take an order, we put the stock list out, because the fish change up every week. 90% of the fish come in fine and sellable. 5% have to be treated, we have to release them the following week. About four or 5% don't come in at all, but they're on the stock list, so people place orders for them. So that's what Emilio was mentioning, um, where the heck this gold algae eater is, which is really a Chinese algae eater. They call them gold algae eaters, they're really Chinese algae eaters that, have, that are the albino version. But uh, they are no, no shows, it's a typical order. Otocyclus, out. Otocyclus is huge for me, this is bad. I have otocyclus coming in from Colombia Thursday morning, but that means I can't release it though till the following week, till Monday, uh, when we can start shipping it. It takes three or four days to transition this stuff when it comes in, or else the fish are going through too much shock. Boom, 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 you can imagine going from one water condition to another water condition, then you expect the pet store to be able to handle something like that. So we get it all conditioned, ready to ship. That means they're gonna be out of otocyclus for almost a week. That's a bummer. Uh, what we do is we contact the store. We say, hey, there's no otocyclus. Do you, you want some Siamensis algae eaters or maybe some small bushy nose, something like that. Because they, they just need fish to sell. They prefer otocyclus, but sometimes a substitution would be okay. We bring in plants every Tuesday. They're not in yet, so there's some open holes here. 
dwarf hair grass potted. That'll be in in about one hour. We found out during COVID that the Florida nurseries where we get our plants from bring in a lot of their plants, unfortunately, from Asia. So during COVID, all of a sudden we couldn't get things like Anubias. And what the heck? It's because they don't grow them anymore. They just bring them in from, from Asia. A few of the things like uh, Anacharis, they can't grow down there because it needs colder weather. Anacharis used to come from a guy named Joe Labita up in Northern California. And he, he actually had waders on, a little scuba outfit on, and he would pick this stuff up by the thousands. Now he's 76, he has, he, he's trying to get someone else to do it. Well, he hasn't been able to find a young guy or girl that's willing to get their feet wet in the state of California. So now we have no more Anacharis. All right, so we're gonna run to the office. A uh, Couple of these stores are our sales manager, Dana's stores. And I gotta let her know about the Otis Sync list if she doesn't know already, so she can ask the customer if he needs any subs. So when you think about the business side of it, a store wants to sell he brings in $2,000 in fish and he's hoping to sell $5,000 from that $2,000 and you only ship him a thousands in fish. For that week, he's, he, most he can get out of that is $2,500 to $3,000 in sales. You've really impacted his business. So if he can sub, if he can bring in as close to $2,000 as budgeted fish, he wants to do that because his traffic's gonna be the same traffic and he wants, fish for him. Hello. I thought I heard Tina in earlier, but I guess not. Dana. So Dana is the best sales manager in the entire industry. Dana Colum. And um, she is, I'm just going to tell her now that Mammoth Pet Store has no Otosynclus. Were you aware we were out of Otosynclus? I saw that on a quarter. Uh, okay. So She's the one that now has to contact the customer. Well, she's gonna wait till they finish the order completely in case there's a couple other subs, but she's the one that has to contact the customer and tell them the, the bad news. All right, so now, usually Peter, he's our logistics manager. Uh, he's at the doctor's office this morning. So I have to quickly go through uh, a little stack of orders and uh, put on whether we need a heat pack, cold pack, or no pack. Because remember, when fish get shipped, they have to stay in the 70s from here all the way to where it gets to the customer. And we're talking about a 24-hour period. We pack them so they survive 48 hours, but, but that's, that's an extreme. Anything after 24 hours is detrimental to the fish. So we put heat packs in if it's gonna be under 70 degrees during the shipping process. We put a cold pack in if it's gonna be over 80 degrees during the shipping process. And we leave them alone if it's gonna be 70s, mid 80s during the process. I should say over mid 80s, we put a cold pack in the, in the box. So that's how we do it to keep the fish safe. We start with a flat, we build the box. Gomo builds a box. And then we have outside stacks and stacks of these coolers like basically a beer cooler. And when it's this shape, we call it a lobster box. We have taller, smaller, just depends on what we got to ship. This gets wrapped and shipped. People use, you'll see that little snow, start little styrofoam pieces, different ways of uh, shipping. We, we don't like to waste that much plastic, so we use newspaper, recycled newspaper. It's also the most common use in wholesale uh, is newspaper for that extra insulation when we're shipping the, the fish. It's more environmentally sound than using the little styrofoam, the popcorn that people use. Plants finally arrived, so we get some of these orders out the door that we're waiting on the plants. These are our potted plants. And so Nayeli, the plant person, uh, plant person is putting them all away by category so we can catch them easier when it's time to catch them. I don't know, do you catch catching if to harvest a plant? Pick a plant, that's the best way to say it. So she's, she's organizing them so we can pick them quicker. This is one couple hours in a wholesale business and I love it because, well, it's cool. It's fish and plants. But also, we do a lot of good for the community. I mean, people, they live longer. It's been proven if they have an aquarium in their home, so get an aquarium. 
We help um, indigenous people around. Oh, I want to show you, god dang it, before we conclude, can I show you a new beta that's hit the trade? It's called the Alien Beta. They're like 50 bucks retail. They cost me $14 just to bring a few in. It's a cross between Beta Splendens, which is the beta you see everywhere, and Beta, I think, Cochina. They, I haven't heard from the breeder. I don't think he's telling people what he cross it with, but he cross it with the Wild Beta. There's 70 different Wild Betas to choose from, so I'm not sure which one he did it with. But anyways, it's the Alien Beta. One of the tricks in this trade is find out where these things are coming from and then find that guy and cut out the middleman. Right now, since they're brand new, and I had several customers asking me for them, so they're all pre-sold, I went ahead and just bought them from the guy I knew who had them, but I know he's buying them from someone else, and that's the guy I wanna find, because you know these are too expensive right now. I need to get the price down by another five or six bucks. I only brought in a couple dozen of these guys, and they've already been sold. So even though a couple of species every month go extinct in our trade, Every once in a while, the breeders can cock something and we can bring something new to the trade. And this is the Alien Beta. That's the day in the life of a wholesaler. Hope you enjoyed this show and I hope to see you in the next show. And in the meantime, between the next show and between this show and the next show, if you don't have one already, get an aquarium. <laughs>